Divine Divinity is a very easy game to get into and enjoy. It lacks anything memorable, like the party NPCs with minds and dialogue of their own in Baldur's Gate Shadows of Alm. But it has atmosphere, tons of quests, and a great deal of variety to offer. Above all, it's plain fun to play. To develop your character and find ever better weapons and armor. To face the foe around the next corner. And who knows? Perhaps Larian will step forward to carry the CRPG banner in the near future. We could do a lot worse. That was 2002 by IGN. And admittedly, Larian Studios have come a long way since then. And I think the phrase lacks anything memorable and could do a lot worse really sum up the current offering. But those sorts of comments will have to wait for my full review, which I'll get around to when I succeed in finally playing through and recording the game, which due to all the bugs is a bit of a nightmare, and then trying to record that in 60 frames per second in HD is another nightmare on top of a nightmare. So subscribe if you finally want to see me review the game when I've beaten it. But for now, I wanted to put out a short video in lieu of my Boulders Gate review, which is going to take obviously a long time given the sheer scope of the game. And if it is anything as buggy as Early Access, and so far my impressions are that it is, if anything it seems more buggy than Early Access, which is just bizarre, the amount of reloading and stuff will drag this out hugely. I may not even finish it in the end, but who knows? I'll try my best. But I did want to address something that bothered me about the last video I made on Boulder's Gate 3 that seems to have taken off. I mean, 650 comments is pretty darn crazy for me. Uh, and most of them are not nice and uh, even a few death threats. That's great. Anyways, moving on. I wanted to address one thing that I think I got wrong in that video. Not so much on the level of taste game design. I agree with all the points I made in that, and I still hold that view about Baldur's Gate 3 as I'm trying to replay it now. But I did want to address something that I think I messed up in my explanation in that video. What I needed to do was explain two different things. I needed to make criticisms about the game, but also about my frustration with the appropriation of an IP and how I feel fans are deservedly angry when they feel an IP has been appropriated. Before going on to that point, though, I want to address a really, really, really stupid criticism that I got so much on that last video, and it hurts my mind to think about. A lot of people commented on that video saying, Oh, you're old man. Get with the times, bro. Uh, they had to make Baldur's Gate 3 like Divinity 2 because that's the only way you can make modern CRPGs. That just shows that you don't follow the CRPG community at all. Um, the Pillars of Eternity series made by Josh Sawyer, who was involved with the original Black Isle team, who made Icewind Dale, who made the equally famous um, Fallout New Vegas. There are, he's completely capable of making a good 2D RPG. Underrail is an underrated but great game. There have been many, many successful traditional 2D RPGs, uh, the Pathfinder games. The idea that Baldur's Gate needed to be remade in a way that is almost identical in feel to the Divinity series in order to be successful or continue on the legacy is just mind-blowingly false and shows that you're either just a deluded fan of Larian games and think that everything they do is the only way that games should be made, or... You just don't know that much about CRPGs, and you probably just played Divinity 1, Divinity 2, and that's that's the, the extent of your experience with Divinity. So, anyways, on to the, the real topic. Sorry, I went on longer than I intended to there. If you've subscribed to my channel, you probably have noticed that I recently did a video on the fall of Interplay and the collapse of the of, uh, Fallout Project Van Buren and uh, how Bethesda then swooped in during the bankruptcy process in Interplay and managed to uh, uh, pay some of the debts that Interplay was suffering from in exchange for getting the rights to make three Fallout games with that IP. Those games have turned out to be Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. Really paid off for them monetary, monetarily-wise. Monetary-wise? Mon uh, they made money. I cover in that video how they made Fallout 3 using their own in-house engine. At the time, that was what we colloquially called the Oblivion engine. And I covered how they lent this engine to the original developer of Fallout 3, i.e. Fallout Van Buren, Josh Sawyer, when they realized their in-house studio talent wouldn't be able to produce an immediate follow-up to Fallout 3 given their work on Skyrim. Now, I thought this was a nice story because it showed Bethesda's respect for the IP they had acquired. While true... A lot of Fallout fans of 1 and 2 and Tactic were not immediately fans of Fallout 3. 
Nor really was I. I've slowly come around to love the Bethesda Fallout games over time, and that even includes Fallout 76. I know, it's crazy, but back on topic. I thought them reaching out to Sawyer's newly formed Oblivion Studios was a really classy move towards the fanbase. They knew that Bethesda's way of doing things might have alienated some fans, but nonetheless they wanted to keep them appeased. They wanted the feel of the original Fallout games, even if it was going to be made in their own engine. They wanted, in narrative, sound design, and lore, to feel like it was a Fallout game. And in my humble opinion, it turned out amazing. I think Fallout New Vegas converted a lot of old Fallout fans into thinking the new 3D FPS style of Fallout game was a valuable game and could work and could be fun and could carry on the legacy and more importantly the lore and the narrative of that world. It was never going to go back to the old CRPG days, but we could enjoy Fallout in a new way. And so if you've been following my line of thought, you're probably thinking, whoa, old man Banjo, that just means you're wrong about Baldur's Gate 3. I mean, if anything, Larian, the most successful modern CRPG developer, are paying homage to the originals. They're still top-down games. It's not like the game got turned into an ARPG suddenly. Well, you might be right. I need to play through 3 to see if I can stomach it, to figure out whether or not that's true. Because it's really going to depend on the quality of the game. And with all things RPG, you really need to see the full story and the whole narrative before that. And to that extent, people are right. But I want to here then get on to a more general point. And finally, to the thing I think I got wrong in my previous video. I mixed up my criticism of the game with my criticism of the appropriation of IPs for money. Let me explain. We all know that if Larian hadn't made Baldur's Gate 3, we would have gotten a Divinity 3 or something very similar. Divinity is a series that, as the IGN reviewer said, lacks anything memorable, and I agree with them. It's fun to mess around with in multiplayer, but when you compare it to Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate 2, or even some of the very weird and quirky RPGs in the same era such as Ultima, not to mention games like Mass Effect and the work put in by people like Casey Hudson into narrative design, to put it politely, the games just feel a bit dumb. But I'm getting a little bit off topic again. Star Wars. What I want to talk about is Star Wars. I don't like Baldur's Gate 3 being Baldur's Gate 3. For the same reason I don't like new Star Wars being new Star Wars. I actually liked the first film. I don't mind The Mandalorian either, but I've been told not to keep watching it. But the point is, it's not about the quality of any individual show that Disney puts out. Disney could have made a decent sci-fi on their own. New series, new ideas. Remember the days of Stargate? Battlestar Galactica and its remake? Which is probably my favorite show of all time. Heck, even today we're blessed with The Expanse, which is really, really rare in quality, at least in my opinion. You can make something new that is good, and Larian have already proven they can do this objectively. Whatever I think about their games, people love them. My younger friends, who would be way too young to remember the heyday of CRPGs in the 1990s, have gone back and played many of these games, such as Baldur's Gate 2, because of how much they loved Divinity 1 and 2. And that is really an amazing feat for Larian Games to have accomplished. But the sad thing is, I really wish they just made Divinity 3, regardless of any criticisms for or against I might make for Baldur's Gate 3. Because this doesn't feel like a spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate 3. It really feels, regardless of its quality, like a reskin of Divinity 3. While Bethesda changed Fallout a lot in objective gameplay terms, I feel like they did a lot more to try and keep the spirit of the franchise alive. And I just don't feel that level of respect from Larian. And their trailers, their writing, their character design, and their lore don't convince me they particularly care to, either. Which is their right. They own the IP. And they will do with it what they want to do. But to paraphrase the IGN writer, above all, it's plain fun to play. <laughs>